the emergency ultrasound. Um, first part is going to be basically an introduction. Um, for some people with some ultrasound experience, this might seem a little rudimentary, uh, but I just want to at least get the whole breadth of things. Um, some disclosures. I don't have any financial disclosures to give. And a couple of ground rules. There's no smoking, no iPhones. If you have any other phone that is an iPhone, feel free to use it. <laughs> and uh, anything that Steve Jobs makes, can't use that here. So Dave, put that on So, just like with all the rest of my lectures, there's always questions for prizes. So when you see that indicator, you want to know what side of the probe is that correlate with. When you look at the probe, you're like, hey, there's these little notches right there. You'd think that that's where the, uh, the dot would be, you know? If this is towards the right side of the patient, this will be the right side of the patient. Well, that's completely wrong. Um, what they did, instead, if you turn your probes over the side, there's these little ridges, and those ridges are actually what correspond to that little dot that's right here. I don't know why there's that little dot. Uh, when you look at a patient, this is kind of right, these are the spaces that you're looking for. Um, so with your uh, cardiac view, of course, you're looking at the um, pericardium. When you're looking over at the right side, you're looking for perinephric hematoma or um, fluid collections. Subhepatic, which is basically uh, Morrison's pouch. The other thing you want to be assessing is you want to have the diaphragm in view because you want to look to see if someone has a hemothorax. <coughs> and then also in the pelvis, um, just in between the, the loops of bowel and the bladder. Same thing over here. You're looking for um, capsular hematoma, perinephric hematoma, and uh, fluid in your pleural space. So, so this is the fourth the sub cyphoid four chain review. This is looking for um, pericardial effusion. And your probe is at the sub cyphoid space. The marker is to the right side, um, and that's with the indicator on the left. And um, what you'll see here is you'll see left ventricle, left atrium, right atrium, right ventricle. And like I said, I didn't have a model, so I got the help of Super Saiyan Warrior Goku, who sits in my office. Um, and so the sub cyphoid chamber, you're going to take your probe, you go straight over to the sub cyphoid region. And where is your indicator going to be? Right side. So on the patient's right flank. And the image you're going to see is you're going to see liver. Um, and then you're going to see your heart. The first thing you want to do is you want to first see liver. The liver is a good um, echoic window uh, to see anything behind it. So is this a normal heart? Yes, no? No. Yeah, there is a little bit of pericardial infusion. Um, one of the things that right here you're kind of assessing for is that does that right ventricle collapse during um, um, during filling, and really know it's collapsing only when it's squeezing. So this really isn't a tamponade. It's in Morrison's pouch. Um, you can see here, you have your kidney and your liver, and the other thing you want to get is your diaphragm in view. It's not actually shown here very well. But this is what fluid in Morrison's pouch looks like. So to do the right quadrant ultrasound, um, assess for Morrison's pouch, take your probe um, on the patient's right flank. Where is your probe? indicator going to be. You're on a long axis here. What was that? Towards the head. Towards the head. So your uh, probe is at the head. Um, you can see here, this is diaphragm. This is lung. So that's why you kind of see it. It almost mirrors it. Um, and then right here is the area of interest, Morrison's pouch. Most studies actually say that if you just look at Morrison's pouch, you can catch most of your um, intraperitoneal fluid or any hemorrhages in it.